Welcome back to On Point, Dirt Mile Edition. Ed DeRosa alongside Scott Shapiro at the home this year anyway of the Dirt Mile. Scott, we get a one-turn Dirt Mile next year, which I'm very much looking forward to. But for this year, two turns, uh, an added wrinkle for handicapping, short run into the stretch. Uh, to me, it's a two-horse race on paper, but some intangibles with more spirit and sharp Azteca that might give reason for others to look elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely. If more spirit runs back to anything close to the Met Mile, albeit that was at one turn, he certainly is going to be very, very tough to beat. But obviously you have some concerns with him being on the sidelines, losing right. some time with training. Appears to be doing very well. If you're playing in you know, multi-race wagers or spreading in any sort of sequence, it's, it's kind of hard to just completely toss them, <laughs> especially Baffert off the bench and you know, in the big spot. Um, Sharp Ass Tekka to me is a horse I'm probably going to play against. Looks real good on the analytics. Hasn't proven to me. Uh, that he's going to definitely like it out here in Southern California. Remains to be seen with uh, Navarro and whatnot. I, I give a big look though to Accelerate, who's a horse I don't think you're as excited as I am about. Um, he kind of hit a brick wall in the Pacific Classic, right. but he really wanted no part of the mile and a quarter. Um, still got a very good uh, number that day, considering that he got tired. Um, I think he, you know, he's loved this course other than that race. Uh, he's been training, you know, moving forward in each and every race and loved it down here. And I think Sadler has him ready for a big effort. Trails yeah. outside those other two. I mean, my issue with him is because I do like the top two. You know, after that, how excited can I be about the third or fourth choice? Uh, certainly understand how he fits, though, given what we saw in the San Diego and Sharp Azteca. I mean, people are tiptoeing around it. I don't really understand. I, I mean, to me, Navarro is a huge it's either a wild card or a trump card or an old maid. I don't know. I don't know what some card that either wins the race or doesn't. But yeah, I mean, you have to wonder what condition the horse is going to come in here, given some of the questions surrounding his tactics and other jurisdictions. And if he were the, the I think more spirits going to be the favorite, which gives me a little extra confidence to take a slightly longer price on Sharp Azteca, similar to my approach with Arrogate, who I know you don't like me to say I'm picking against the favorite, but uh, <laughs> so for that reason, uh, you know, he looks good on optics, there's number power, et cetera. Uh, I'm definitely using him, but I understand the concerns and no one's gonna be shocked if he's up the track. Yeah, he's probably a winner. I mean, maybe if more spirit runs back to his Met Mile, he right. could run second. But it does seem like Sharp Aztec is a, a win or, or do nothing type horse. So maybe if you're playing vertical wagers, he's a good horse to kind of keep using the top spot and then, you know, not use underneath. Um, it's a tough race for me to come up with anyone other than the top three horses to win the race. I do think maybe a horse like Awesome Slew, who I do think has proven he's better uh, in one turn configurations. Mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of winning a race. I still think at 12 to 1 on the line, um, he should come running. Will his run be as sustained around two turns remains to be seen. But he's been a bit of a different horse since Cassie's got him. Hasn't really run him at two turns, so it does remain to be seen. A little bit of a wild card there. Yeah. I think he could do worth. I think James Scully picked him to, uh, to win. He did. Yeah, which is a, which is a bold prediction, especially uh, considering the fact that it'll probably be a, somewhat of a, at least a speedy or speed favoring course would be my guess but um, there's some value there underneath maybe Iron Fist looks good in a couple yeah, of spots I people... think he looked good on the optics EQ plot yeah. um, but to me that you know it's not a race where I'm going to spread too deep in the horizontals. No I agree and, and we're not going to go through all the races but uh, I did want to point out it is the first leg of the late pick four and it's the second leg of the all breeders cup pick four on Friday so if you're a pick four player, it's a pretty, I mean, it's a race you want to get right. Uh, how sort of your structure looking in terms of the strength you're going to use the horses we talked about? Yeah, I mean, I think for the for the all uh, Breeders' Cup pick four was what I really kind of started to think about a little more. I know that I did handicap the 10th race for the daily selections, but hadn't really configured the, the, the uh, tickets per se. Um, but uh, I definitely want to spread the, the Breeders' Cup juvenile mm -hmm. uh, turf out as much as possible. So going to probably key in a few horses in the distaff, a late, um, and um, maybe uh, forever unbridled, uh, maybe one other, and then narrow down in the, uh, in the, um, in the as I mentioned, accelerate and more spirit in the dirt mile. And then the juvenile Phillies turf, still trying to figure that out, but definitely the juvenile turf is the race <laughs> I'll be spreading. I think Yeah, the, for, for me, if the juvenile turf chalks out, I'm probably going to lose money because I, I'm spending too much that if, you know, a top one or two choice wins that. Uh, I do have a heavier lean in the Juvenile Phillies turf with the European horses. So there I, I can maybe afford a, a longer price elsewhere. But yeah, but based on what I think will happen, if the Juvenile turf chalks out, I'm gonna lose. 
Yeah, I think I'm probably in a similar boat. I will try to limit my exposure in the other races for that reason, right. so maybe I can profit somewhat, but I'll be banking on needing a price in that race. I'll probably end up leaving out, if any horses, some of the logicals just for that reason, <laughs> yeah. because, you know, getting $50 back on a $100 wager versus losing and, and leaving out a long price yeah. horse. We're, we're here to make money, not hit tickets. Right, so right, that's, right. That's, that's yeah, the we approach. can pat ourselves on the back another time. That's right? <laughs> absolutely. All right, well, we'll have uh, plenty of other races to hopefully get right. Uh, we'll certainly talk about the, the big ones, the Distaff Classic Double later in the week, but uh, it's been fun. I think this is the most I've ever talked about the dirt mile. So thanks for joining me. Yeah, no problem. I think it's a good rendition of the race. I do agree with you about the one turn, you know, being more excited right. and looking forward to it next year, but it's definitely a talented group. All right. Well, that's Scott Shapiro. I'm Ed DeRosa. Uh, join us throughout the week.